This is Michaela. She's 24 years old. She has been having discomfort symptoms for four days ago. She has red rashes around her arm. It is embarrassing for her to go out with visible rashes around her arm. She went to the hospital today. The doctor has diagnosed her with psoriasis, but she has been wondering what psoriasis is. Hi everyone. Here you are going to learn about an immune disorder. This type of disease is one of the many skin disorders. People always mistaken this for eczema, but today we are gonna talk about psoriasis. Psoriasis is an autoimmune disease where our body's own immune system attack us, affecting nearly 125 million people around the globe, including the reality television personality and entrepreneur Kim Kardashian. According to the National Psoriasis Foundation, the peak age for diagnosis of psoriasis is between 15 to 35 years old. Psoriasis affects men and women equally. There are 8 million number of Americans with psoriasis. In addition, 10% of patients who have a psoriasis gene. Next, if a father or a mother having psoriasis, the child of developing psoriasis would be 14%. While the cause of psoriasis remains unclear, when triggered, it produces inflammation in the body that can lead to flare-ups of red itchy patchy of red skin. This occurs because of the overactive immune system, which speeds up skin cells growth. Normal skin cells completely grow and shed in about one month. However, with psoriasis, skin cells do this in only three to four days. Instead of shedding, the skin cells pile up on the surface of the skin. It can get confused with eczema, but the biggest difference is the thick skin buildout of psoriasis versus the red patches in eczema. There are several types of psoriasis which varies in their sign and symptom. Firstly, we have plaque psoriasis, which is the most common type of psoriasis that usually causes dry, itchy, gray skin patches, which covers with scales. They are usually appears on the elbows, knees, lower back, and also scalp. Secondly, we have nail psoriasis. Which affects fingernails and toenails. This causes spitting, abnormal nail growth, and discoloration. Thirdly, we have the guttate psoriasis, which mainly affects young adults and also children. It marks by small, drop-shaped, scaling spot on the trunk, arms, and also legs. Proceed next is a few types of least common type of psoriasis. We have inverse psoriasis, pustular psoriasis, and also erythrodermic psoriasis. Next, let's look into the myth in psoriasis. Psoriasis is contagious. However, it is not contagious. It is an autoimmune disorder in which the immune system reacts improperly and produces too many skin cells. Secondly, it is said that psoriasis is only dry skin. Some believe it is slowly a skin condition. However, it is actually an autoimmune system disorder. Next is the sign and symptom of psoriasis. Generally, it begins as red scaling papules, which is a raised area of skin tissue that's less than one centimeter around. The papules can comes together to form round to oval plaques. In addition, the rashes form are often puritic. Which is itchy and maybe painful. For the risk factor of psoriasis, we have family history, alcohol consumption, obesity, smoking, stress, history of skin disorder or injury. Let us now look into the diagnosis of psoriasis. There are two age groups of onset: 16 to 22 and 57 to 60 years old. Patients' past medical and surgical history, family and social history are all reviewed. Psoriasis can also be diagnosed through physical examination of the clinical appearance of the skin lesion. 
is there having any altered area of skin and also to inspect all areas of the body especially the skin surface of knee, elbow, chest, abdomen, pelvis, scalp, nails and also joints. Laboratory tests are done to differentiate psoriasis from other conditions. The laboratory test includes skin biopsy, a skin lesion to be removed and sent for microscopic diagnosis, serologic antibody studies, and bacterial culture. The assessment of severity can be done by measuring the total area of body affected by the psoriasis, which we call psoriasis body surface area. The surface area of the hand is assumed as 1%. Hence, if the value measured is less than 3%, we consider it as mild psoriasis. If it's greater or equal to 3% but less than 10%, we consider it as moderate psoriasis. And lastly, if it's greater or equal to 10%, we consider it as severe psoriasis. In terms of psoriasis management, there are many treatments that can actually be given. However, for a mild psoriasis, topical treatment will usually be considered as a first-line agent. They are emollients, calcineurin inhibitors, mild steroids, colta, and many more. Emollients function as a soap substitute or moisturizers that restore normal hydration and skin barrier function. Tar-based preparation, on the other hand, slows the growth of skin cells and makes it look better. Even though this tub based preparation sounds convincing, it may also stain our clothes and cause some irritation and hence should be used carefully. Topical corticosteroids also slow the growth of skin cells and help with inflammation. They range in strength from a mild to a very strong corticosteroid. And as they may cause many side effects such as thinning of the skin, especially when used in a long term period, they should only be applied when recommended by a doctor or pharmacist. Dystranol suppresses skin cell production and may be used for psoriasis patients with a few large thick plaques. Vitamin D plays an important role in the synthesis and metabolism of skin cells. Currently, calcipotriol is the only topical vitamin D analog available in Malaysia, which is used in the treatment of psoriasis. It is, however, often used in combination with the corticosteroid. Calcineurin inhibitors such as tacrolimus and pimacrolimus reduce the activity of the immune system and are often used for sensitive areas such as the face and the genital area. There are also non-drug therapies available to manage psoriasis. Light therapy involves artificial UVB light exposed to the skin. It helps to suppress the immune system resulting in less skin inflammation. You can get the treatment done both at the hospital or at home. Next, the Dead Sea Salt Bath is rich in minerals that could not only relieve skin itchiness but also soften scales. Stress management is also very important to reduce the hormone that triggers flare. In the cases of when symptoms cannot be controlled with topical medications or when the patient's well-being is greatly affected, systemic therapy are given. They are also given for patients that has more than one of the followings. 1. When the patient has been diagnosed with moderate, severe or severe psoriasis. 2. When the localized spot is greatly impaired. or 3. When the phototherapy has failed. Some of the medications given are cyclosporine. Cyclosporine suppresses the immune system and slows down the growth of certain immune cells and are taken orally. It is important to avoid grapefruit and alcohol while taking it. Next medication is methotrexate. Methotrexate suppresses the overactive immune system by reducing the growth of skin cells and are taken orally. However, it may possibly cause serious health problems if not consumed properly. Pregnant and breastfeeding women as well as children cannot take methotrexate. Lastly, fish oil supplements are given as they contain ingredients that can help prevent inflammatory activities that causes psoriasis. Next, patients are considered for biological therapy if they are contraindicated to intolerance to or have failed light therapy and standard systemic therapy. Biologics are particularly efficacious in treating moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Some of the examples of biologics are Aralimumab, Infliximab, Itanercept, and Ustekinumab. 
Enzyximab requires intravenous infusion while others can be given subcutaneously. Despite the efficacy of biologics in treating psoriasis, they are often associated with serious adverse events. These include reactivation of tuberculosis, malignancies, congestive heart failure, and hematological disturbance. Hence, patients should be screened for TB prior to treatment and their adverse effects should be monitored throughout the treatment. In conclusion, psoriasis can be manageable with the help of treatments. We hope this video has been really informative for everyone. Thank you so much and don't forget to click subscribe and like this video if you enjoyed watching it.